Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and I'm back at it with this piston shirt. You take this and you burn it. Let me start off by saying this. I don't like Zaza Pachulia at all. I have probably never disliked a player as much as I do Zaza Pachulia. Some things that he does on the court, the way he plays, I don't know, it just bugs me. And I'm upset with him as well for hurting Kawhi, you know, since I am a Kawhi fan and I wanted to see a competitive series between Golden State and San Antonio. But of course, that isn't going to happen now because of Zaza Pachulia. Anyways. We all know what he did or what he didn't do. And Greg Popovich called him out for it before game two. Two step, lead with your foot, close out is not appropriate. It's dangerous, it's unsportsmanlike, it's just not what anybody does to anybody else. And this particular individual has a history with that kind of action. You know, it was probably one of the most vicious interviews that I have ever seen from a coach in this league. Who gives a damn about what his intent was? You ever hear a manslaughter? And Zaza said that Pavic saying the things that he did only made people hate him even more, if that is even possible. And it's now at the point where him and his family are receiving death threats. Guys, look. I know it sucks. If Zaza hurt Kawhi intentionally, then yeah, you have a right to be upset with him. You have a right to dislike him. But death threats? That's not cool, especially when you're threatening his family, his wife and kids. That's crossing the line and then some. And Zaza, of course, commented on this as well, saying, I don't blame everything on Pop, but what he said had a lot of influence. You had a lot of people where, unfortunately, you can't control what everybody's intelligence is. Hold up, first off, Zaza, I get where you're coming from, where you're upset that people are taking shots at your family and threatening your family. I'll be upset too. But this isn't the situation we start calling people stupid. That's not gonna make things any better. You don't go around saying you can't control how smart some people are. That You don't go there because think about it. The people who are gonna be sending death threats are probably five-year-old kids who just don't know better right now. And calling people stupid isn't going to help the situation at all. Anyways, let's just continue with what he said. Me as a person, as a man, I don't mind dealing with it, but I hate to see my family deal with it. My wife and kids who have nothing to do with it, who are very innocent. I just hate my family going through that. They don't deserve that. I'm not blaming everything on Popovich, but he was a very big part of it. Man, oh man. All right. This guy really rubs me the wrong way. Like, I was perfectly fine with what you said in the first part. You know, uh, hate me, but don't hate on my family. I probably would have said the same thing. But then you had to say that Pop was a very big part of it. It's like... It's like, yeah, Pop probably did influence the people, but at the same time, you have to take responsibilities for your actions, Zaza. When you're a player who has a reputation like you do, and something like this happens to the best player on the other team during the NBA playoffs, then yeah, people are gonna retaliate and be upset. But that being said, the crime doesn't fit the punishment. Death threats to somebody's family are overboard no matter what he did, especially in a situation like this. So Zaza, just apologize. And everybody else, chill out with all the death threats and stuff like that. That's not cool. Let's just move on though. This has to be the theme of this year's playoffs. Dirty. Dirty and boring. That's all the playoffs have been so far this year. There was all the talk about Kelly Olynyk being the dirtiest player in the NBA right now. And then, of course, there was Zaza. And after that, it didn't get much publicity. But Aldridge appeared to try and do the same thing to, uh, to Durant that Zaza did to Kawhi. And now Stephen Curry is accusing Dwayne Dedman of making a dirty play in Game 3. And at first, I had no idea what he was talking about. But... As it turns out, this play was so dirty that Mr. Clean couldn't clean it. Look at this. Just watch the knee of Deadman knee Curry right in the side of the knee, which causes Curry's knee to buckle. Like, that's crazy. Thankfully, Curry was all right and he didn't get hurt or anything, but that's just a play that could easily injure another player. To get kneed in the side of the knee like that, basically causing your knee to go inwards for a second, it, it, just thinking about it makes me cringe. And that's not cool. And Curry did comment on it yesterday saying, I know he's not a dirty player. I'm not going to try and mess up his reputation, but I feel like that was a dirty play. Luckily, no one was hurt. <laughs> no one? I don't see why he said no one. I mean, the only person who could have been hurt during that play <laughs> was him. Anyways, though, it was a dirty play, no doubt. I mean, there is no way you can defend him kneeing Curry in the knee like that trying to set a screen. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, that's what they get. I mean, you know, they took out the Spurs best player, so it was only right that the Spurs take out one of theirs. And I'm sure that's how Deadman felt. I mean, I would be frustrated too if after a long year of working hard to get to the position you're at to have it all taken away from you by a dirty play that, that's infuriating but injuring another player on the other team to try and get back at them is never the right thing to do i mean the right thing to do is simply to use it as motivation be like all right they robbed us this year 
but we'll be back next year and this isn't happening again i know Kawhi can't wait to have another shot at it next year either i mean Kawhi will be on a mission all year long next year i can guarantee you that anyways like curry said thankfully no one was hurt because i'm not trying to hear any excuses in this year's finals about this player was injured or that player was injured so it doesn't count in the funniest news you will ever hear news, former NBA great, NBA legend, and number one overall pick, first ballot for sure Hall of Famer Anthony Bennett is now feeling more confident than ever. Real quick though, how many of you guys even knew what Bennett was up to uh, ever since he was waived by the Brooklyn Nets? earlier this year. No one, I don't blame you. Before this story came out, I had no clue what he was doing. For all I knew, he could have been on the same spiritual journey as OJ Mayo training with the lions in Africa. Well, as it turns out though, Bennett found himself a spot on the Turkish Basketball Super League. Not the regular league, but the Super League, only for super teams and super players. But we all do, of course, remember Bennett for being drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, the team that just won their first NBA championship, and it looks like they will be going to the finals for the third straight year. But I mean, what does that mean? I mean, who cares about NBA championships and stuff like that? I mean, Bennett is playing for a super team, and according to him, even though the Cavs used him as a trade piece to land the final part of their big three and Kevin Love and are having major amounts of success right now, he is the one who will be having the last laugh. As he was quoted saying this yesterday, I feel I have the last laugh. I just turned 24 years old, a lot of time left. Why is he so confident, you ask? You know, he must be killing it over there in Turkey to have so much confidence. I mean, the report did say that his team was only 40 minutes away from a EuroLeague championship, so Anthony Bennett must have turned into the MJ of the EuroLeague, averaging 32 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists, just straight up dominating. I mean, you would think that. Wouldn't you, since just about every NBA player who goes overseas kills it over there. But I guess that just depends if you consider averaging out 1.3 points per game in 7 minutes, killing it or not. I mean, somehow Bennett is doing worse in the EuroLeague than he was in the NBA. Don't ask me, I do not know how that is possible. Look, Bennett, I could go on and on all day about how you most likely won't have the last laugh when it comes to the guys playing for the Cavs right now. But there is a reason that you were selected number one overall. You clearly have this untapped reservoir of talent that not even you knows about. I mean, like you said, you are only 24. So hopefully you can find your way. You know, something like Hassan Whiteside did. I mean, he didn't realize how good he was till he was, what, 26 or 27? He was bouncing around in leagues overseas, in and out of the D-League, until one day, it just all clicked when he got his number called by Miami. And hopefully, one day, you can become the next great uh, uh, NBA story, but I definitely wouldn't bet on it. Finally! Yes, thank you, yes. Look, I'm not happy that the Cavs lost or that the Celtics won. I can care less who wins the games. I'm just happy that we finally got to see a close game, uh, for the most part. I mean, now I did have my concerns when the Celtics were down 6-5 to five in the opening minutes, and also, I guess, when, you know, when they were down 21 in the third quarter. I mean, it looked like Kevin Love was about to set the record for all-time three-pointers made in a playoff game last night. I mean, he was cooking early on, and so was Kyrie, and then for Boston, they didn't have Isaiah Thomas, and Avery Bradley was doing everything he could on offense to try and make up for the loss of Isaiah Thomas. Uh, but like I said, it just wasn't enough because Boston still found themselves down big in the third quarter. But then, then something clicked inside of Marcus Smart when he said, screw all of the statistics that say I'm a below average three point shooter. So what if I'm supposed to be a defensive point guard who can't make a shot to save his life? I'm gonna go get these buckets. And he did. Marcus Smart caught fire from three to help the Celtics back into the game in the fourth quarter. The man scored 27 points on the game, shooting 7 of 10 from three. Look, if you're a Cavs fan, all you can do is laugh. I mean, hey, if Marcus Smart hits 7 of his 10 three-point attempts, then you got it. Nothing you guys can do against that. But he may have hit 7 threes, but none of them were more important than the one Avery Bradley hit with 0.1 seconds left on the clock to break the tie and give Boston the 111 to 108 game three win. And that was one of the most suspenseful buzzer beaters because you couldn't even tell if it was going to go in or not. The ball was dancing out of the rim for like a solid second before it fell through the net, which turned out to be a good thing because it took away any chance the Cavs had at possibly trying to make a desperation three to tie the game up and send it to overtime. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Boston, for entertaining me last night. 
But now with all of that out the way, let's get into the question of the day. And yesterday, after Al Horford's sister called out LeBron James for handpicking his team, I asked you guys what you thought. If you thought the Cavs as a whole were just too good of a team. And you guys said this, they're not as overpowered as the Warriors, but the Cavs have a super team as well. They kept their own best player, Kyrie Irving, added the best player from the Heat, LeBron James, best player from the Timberwolves, Kevin Love, and Darren Williams, who used to be the best player on the Nets. I mean, look what LeBron did without Kyrie or Kevin Love in the 2015 finals. Timothy Mozgov was the second best player in that finals. So does it really matter if the Cavs pick up Derrick Williams or Kyle Korver? No, it doesn't. The Pistons would have beat the Cavs in round one last year without LeBron. Same with this year's Pacers. Yet thanks to LeBron, they both got swept. Don't forget in game three against Indiana, Kyrie and Love didn't even play the fourth quarter and LeBron still managed to win. You are so wrong. Darren Williams and Kyle Korver were both all-stars. J.R. Smith was the sixth man of the year. A lot of mixed comments on yesterday's video, and I will admit, I did not give enough credit to Tristan Thompson, but still, players like Kyle Korver, J.R. Smith, Darren Williams, and Richard Jefferson, don't even get me started on Iman Shumper. They all used to be pretty good players in the NBA, except for Iman Shumper. Uh, six man of the years, all-stars, you name it, but the key words used to be those guys, maybe except for J.R. Smith, you know, were all at the tail end of their careers before siding with the Cavs. Not nearly on the same level as they once were, basically a shell of what they used to be. In J.R.'s case, though, he was just seen as an inconsistent locker room nightmare who chucked up way too many ill-advised shots. And I don't see another player in the NBA that you can put on a team like that and take LeBron off and have them be as successful as they have been. So even if he did choose what guys he wants to play with, I'm not mad at him for picking the guys that he did. Just smart veterans who play hard and want to win a ring. Now, if he would have been like, I need Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Kawhi Leonard, and Kevin Durant, stuff like that, or even if they were all just, you know, borderline or close to being all-stars, then yeah, it wouldn't be a good look. But I'm not gonna be mad at him for picking up a bunch of veterans at the tail end of their careers, no matter who they were or, what, or used to be or anything like that. Anyways, now it's time for today's question of the day and I never ever ever thought it would be about this but do you think it's possible for Anthony Bennett uh, to become the next Hassan Whiteside type story do you think he could still save his career uh, let me know your answer down in the comment section below but other than that thank you once again for watching the video hope you guys did enjoy if you did don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date with everything going on in the NBA and until tomorrow keep getting the bucks to my CC and I'm out of here peace